Elizabeth, it's so nice and uh, I'm so happy finally to meet you and uh, you are uh, ICORN uh, uh, president, yes? I am the program director yeah. of ICORN, so uh, I have a boss, Harry Gelunde, he is the executive director but I'm in charge of our program, the, the residencies and uh, these things, yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, 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 thanks to uh, this program, I could uh, visit and leave Antwerp uh, as a pen flat guest and wrote um, four books as humor, uh, uh, most of them humor books, and the last book is about Antwerp, my impressions, and um, interviews with uh, prominent Antwerp people like musicians, politicians, uh, writers, poets, human rights activists, and um, um, etc. Um, artists, and and my impression, and I published it in two languages, like Dutch and English. And now this book, uh, you can find this book in the Grun Waterman, so the famous bookstore in Antwerp, old and with a big history and um, um, a, um, a lot of writers and uh, 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 creative people like this uh, bookstore so I'm so proud yes. uh, to, to sell my book and uh, there and um, to present it in Antwerp and uh, one of the guy uh, told me that now I'm a part of Antwerp. Yes, you are. So. <laughs> That's great, congratulations. Um, I'm sorry I missed the launch on the Friday, but I have some time tomorrow, I hope, so I can visit the bookshop and um, get a copy of your book. Yes, uh, of course you are very busy with your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately. And, uh, would you tell some words about your important work and uh, uh, what you do for writers, bloggers, journalists, yeah. cartoonists who um, flee to their countries, yes? Yeah. The, idea, the idea of ICORN is that we know that there are a lot of writers and artists, either creative writers or journalists, as you say, bloggers, uh, cartoonists, but also visual artists, uh, photographers and so on, who are uh, pressured in their home countries because of their uh, uh, expressions. So it can be something they wrote or something they, they published in other ways and we know that the, most of them would really like to stay in their countries and do important work there for democracy and for human rights. Some of them are human rights uh, uh, advocates and some are, are just doing their work as journalists or as writers and uh, still they come under pressure. It can be from the authorities, that's the most uh, common. Uh, or it can be also from other groups, like in Bangladesh now we see some religious groups that are attacking bloggers, for instance. And when they can no longer stay in their countries, when it's like they're almost like their last resorts, we help them by giving them a residency for one to two years. And uh, that is the, what our aim is that it should be a long term, but not permanent. We are not a refugee organization. It's supposed to be a, a stepping stone to find out maybe you can go back to your country, maybe you have to change uh, your life in other ways. So, uh, so that's what we do. So this trip I'm doing now, I have been to Rotterdam in the Netherlands. They have just started to be a, a city of refuge and they have invited their first uh, uh, persecuted, it's a journalist, I cannot say a lot more, but okay. uh, we try to keep a lot of, of uh, secrecy because of security, because the persons are in vulnerable situations. And they and I am here in Antwerp, because Antwerp has, as you know very well, had the flat that the Penn Flanders has been running, and they have very generously said uh, six months of the year uh, we can have an, an ICON candidate. But now they have got some good uh, relations also with the city council, so we hope that Antwerp can also be a member of ICON uh, with each other. And we really need a lot of uh, uh, new cities and places, because we have a lot of people who are in need of a place. We have uh, more than 100 uh, applications for a residency each year and now we have about 50 cities so you can understand that we have a great demand for the residencies. So, and how many uh, cities 
uh, you have in your project? We have now between 50 and 60. I'm not sure if it's... Uh, it, we just had a new uh, city asking if they could join us, a Swedish city. So I think we are about 55, 57 cities more or less now. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah, it's great. And, it's all, uh, and in, it's all over the Europe. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, not, it's not just in Europe, it's uh, mainly in Europe. But uh, because, but it's also in the United States, and uh, we have had two, one city in Canada and one in uh, Brazil that are now wanting to join, and we also have uh, two cities in Mexico. Mm. So the American continent is growing, and but we have also spoken to uh, a couple of cities in South Africa, and uh, and uh, but it's a little bit in the future, or maybe also Australia and Sri Lanka. Oh. So we are trying to be. It's easier, I think, for people to be near where they where they come from culturally, and they don't have to go so far. I mean, it's a big cultural difference. And there's a lot of problems, especially with the language. If you, as a writer, have to establish yourself in a new country, as you know very well. I mean, you have said you published your book in English and and in uh, Dutch. Dutch. And I mean, none of these uh, languages are your mother tongue, so you are dependent on uh, translations and so on. So uh, I mean, I think every writer expresses themselves better in their in their mother tongue. So, yes, but so I'm so so lucky. I have a very good translator. That's good. Yeah. And uh, when uh, his name is Martin Tengbergen, and when he started his career, he um, uh, started with the. Maxim Gorky. Oh, wow! Uh, Russian That's writer. That's fantastic. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <gasps> and uh, and finished mm -hmm. with uh, Maxim Efimov. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope he's not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I hope, but he he is retired right now. Oh, um, okay. Yes, oh. and okay, I very good I for you. yes, and yeah. I um, I found a great editor uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. So he, um, um, so uh, the text of interviews mm -hmm. in English. Mm -hmm. No, he, yeah, that's good. Uh, he's a native speaker, and it was a, f a volunteer work. Oh, excellent! So yeah, a yeah, lot of um, yeah, open, yeah. a lot of a lot of good people. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I I attracted. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and uh, they, they they helped me with the book. It's the the way we work is that I mean we have a very small administrative center for the organization in Norway, but the most of the work is done locally in the cities of refuge. When you visit, when you when you uh, invite somebody, you have to also take on the responsibility to to uh, to try to connect the person that you have invited, your your guest, your resident. With the right environments and circles, be it social or professional, uh, because uh, this is this is the idea that the person should continue the work uh, from from the city of refuge. I mean, it's the point is that the person is no longer silent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, when you say you have done uh, four books, that's fantastic because I think it's. Uh, I mean, you have important things to say, uh, and I hope that the people uh, back home also still follow you and read you. Now with the internet it's easier, but it's still a lot of censorship, of course. Yes, and yes, absolutely. And uh, it was easier to write here in, mm. a, f in a free country. Mm. That's good to hear. In uh, good, hear that, yeah. good conditions yeah. and to have time, yeah. not exactly. to survive, but yeah. to, to live and write, yeah. Yeah. not to think about uh, yeah. um, bread. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it, it 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 was good, and that's all my satirical humor books. Mm. Oh, satire! But you know, I'm only one uh, satirical writer from Karelia. Mm. Only one. I allow myself to m mock, yeah, and and laugh on authorities, yeah. church, and etc. Yeah, I think the situation in your home country is getting. It's not getting better, that's for sure. No. We see more uh, applications coming from Russia as well, and some are, some, mm. some people in very serious situations as mm. well. Uh, so that's uh, I think you will see that in the uh, ICOR network, you will see more people from your own country uh, uh, soon. Uh, can you tell some words about uh, Russian applicants? Who are they? I cannot say that. I, you know, it would. I think it would be dangerous for them if I mentioned any names and mm. so on. And not, no, 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 no. Without names. No, or I can. Maybe I, about situations. No? 
I, I can't really say, but I, I, we see not just from uh, from Russia, but also from other countries, we see that there are more pressure on people who are, have LGBTQ mm -hmm. issues. That uh, it's more pressure, but that's so we see that in Russia, but we see it also in other countries around the world, mm -hmm. some African countries, and also of course in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's not. Uh, I mean, you, I don't know if you saw this, but in Bangladesh also, uh, I mean. Um, up until now, the people who have been killed by these yeah. uh, militant Islamists has been uh, bloggers who are atheists. But now they have also attacked uh, 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 intellectuals in the university, teachers, and also people who have been uh, organizing LGBTQ uh, uh, communities. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, it's unfortunately more pressure uh, globally, which I find disturbing. You would think it would be going in the right direction, but it's in some people, some places it's it's a lot of violence Absolute, and i think you can no. uh, you can talk more than you know more about this than i do in your uh, home country about this the but limitations you work with the whole world yeah, yeah. with the, with people from the yeah. whole uh, with the uh, dangerous countries not only yeah, russia but also this uh, i mean if you combine uh, if you combine uh, criticism of the government or mm -hmm. of people in the government. I mean, look at Turkey now. It's terrible. Just yesterday, uh, two uh, journalists were sentenced to long, uh, two to five years uh, sentences. And it's, uh, they have not committed any crimes. Mm -hmm. it's, they have just been doing their work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, you see, uh, under the umbrella of anti-terrorism and all these laws, the, 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 they're cracking down on free expression uh, in many countries, unfortunately. Including uh, European. Yes, I think I'm not parts of Europe. Yes, but I think in uh, still we have quite free uh, discussions uh, in the, in the major parts of, of Europe. But of course, uh, the debate is more heated than it used to be, and it's more polarized as well. And that way, you need more uh, refugee cities. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. And uh, more support and more. Um, uh, government support, yeah? Yeah, we try to work with the local governments and not with the national governments mm -hmm. because we think that the national governments, they have uh, they have some restrictions in what they can do both politically and when it comes to international relations. So when, but when we work with the cities, they have a more local, um, they're, they're more locally engaged and there is individuals there who can do things. I mean, just, I came from Rotterdam, as I said now. And there, it's it's people who have um, uh, a few, a group of individuals who have restored an old house and made it into cultural center for the community and for and so on. And they also built on the roof. They built a flat and said, here we can have a resident uh, artist or writer. So it's it's local uh, commitment. Uh, it's I think it goes a long way. And they can also do things without um, being. Uh, taking uh, risks when it comes to international relations and so on. And they don't make the laws for immigration, for resident, you, you know, visas and permits and yeah. things. So this is, uh, uh, this is why we work with cities more than, uh, we want a local uh, sort of commitment. Uh, of course, we have some support from some governments. We have support from the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We get some funding from them. We have support from the Swedish, uh, uh, Swedish uh, Art Council, they are very committed to getting new cities in Sweden. Uh, and we have some support on, on other, but very few really national governments uh, that are uh, aware or interested in, in what we do. And S so far. <laughs> and uh, I know that um, some uh, famous people, yes, uh, support your activity. Yes, I can. Um, well, the, the support the support is uh, not so much from the well, some famous people, but some of the people we have have uh, uh, been helping have become famous. I mean, the most famous now is Svetlana Alexievich, of course, from Belarus, she, who uh, got the Nobel Prize for Literature, and uh, and that was of course uh, a big. She was in uh, Gothenburg uh, with with Icon uh, from 2000 and around 2006 to 2008. And uh, and we wow. kept, yeah and we kept in touch with her for uh, for a long time because it was uncertain um, if she could go back to her. but she chose in the end after some years in, in Germany also to go back 
um, and uh, she was uh, quite uh, silent. Uh, she was not saying a lot for um, with her government. She was writing her books and everything, but. Uh, but then uh, there is also another, well, she didn't win the Nobel Prize, but the Nobel Prize for Peace went to, Tur to, to Tunisia. Uh, and one of the organizations, it was four organizations, and was started by uh, Siham Ben Sidrin, who was also in Icon, she was in, uh, in Barcelona. But she was there uh, when the regime in Tunisia fell, so she went straight back. She's no longer with this organization, but she still is, uh, she's, her work has been important. And then the third person I'd like to mention is uh, Zineb Belrazoui, who was uh, with us. Um, she was Moroccan, and she uh, needed a place to get out. It was a lot of slander campaigns because she is a very strong young woman standing up for women's rights in Morocco. It's not very popular with uh, a lot of people I, well, there. I guess. So she would, we, she, we offered her a residency in Ljubljana, in Slovenia, and while she was there, she started working for Charlie Hebdo in nice. Paris. And when the murderers came to Charlie Hebdo, luckily she was on holiday, so she, was, she survived, she wasn't there. But of course it's made a, a tremendous impact on her life, and she is now uh, threatened, so she has to live with bodyguards. But she's very, uh, she's told me that she's very uh, uh, happy that she has the icon sort of family because it's people who know more about what it is to be threatened than most people. So, so, uh, so I would like to, and it's a coincidence that these three are all women. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes. Great. Oh, so. so, so brave. Yes, very brave women and very, I think it's very interesting when, um, Svetlana, she says, uh, Svetlana Alexievich, she says in one of the interviews done with, uh, I mean before even the, the, she got the Nobel Prize, she said that uh, the writer has to come down from the barricades. When you are on the barricades, you see, you are involved in the fight. But to be, to be able to write about it, you have to come down from the barricades. You have to, to see it from a distance. And uh, so, so she represents the sort of, uh, the writers who are not seeing themselves necessarily as human rights defenders, whereas other other writers in our network, especially maybe the, the maybe the journalists, maybe not, see themselves more as, or they know that they would also be human rights defenders. Uh, but it's the it's the publishing and the producing of art that is the criteria for Icon. It's it's not necessarily that you are a human rights defender. Yes, of course. Yeah. Great. Uh, a great job, great project, mm -hmm. and um, I wish you great success. Thank you. And um, I hope that more and more cities uh, from all over the world will uh, join you. And uh, the amount of these cities will increase. Well, you know, it's necessary. But my hope is that we don't need the uh, icon anymore. You know, my hope is that people like you can oh. go to your home countries and keep doing the good work that you are doing. And I think that the success for us is the fact that you say you have published four books. I mean, that is our success. It's if you had just sat there and uh, and been uh, sad and lonely and, and and unable to write, we would not have succeeded even if we had the place for you. You know, this, our success is your work. So yeah. thank you. Uh, thank you so much, of course, thank you yeah. so much. It was a great opportunity uh, to, to change the place and to work. And, and if I can say one last thing, I think yes. it's also, uh, I think it's also very uh, illustrative for the program, the way that you have then uh, written about your, your new city, Antwerp, because I think that's also something, you're giving something back. I mean, uh, uh, people may see this as something that uh, the city just gives to somebody, you know, when you are a host, you think you give everything to the guest, but the guest always give you something back. Of course. And that's also, I think that's uh, in some ways underestimated a little bit. Yes, and uh, my book is interesting for several um, reasons. Mm -hmm. So, uh, first part is uh, my impressions, and it's a view of uh, Eastern Europeans, or mm. Russian mm. Uh, guy, to the uh, Western uh, European uh, society. And it could be interesting for local people to see mm. um, another uh, viewpoint. Yes. I think it's always interesting to get uh, 
an outsider is here, yes. but you are also, you know, you have been here long enough to know quite a bit about the society as yes. well. Yes, and maybe a bit uh, 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 refresh yes, the, exactly. their perception yeah. of, of uh, the city. And the um, uh, uh, second part of my book is interviews with a prominent um, Antwerp people. Mm, yes. And it's important for Eastern Europeans and for migrants mm -hmm. who come uh, here and try to integrate mm -hmm. and to live here, to, um, to understand clearly the mentality, yes. the way of thinking, the values, democratic values, what does it mean? Freedom of speech, freedom of expression, uh, freedom of behavior, and etc. 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 So yeah. it's. Uh, That's true. Yeah. That's very true. It's like. Yeah, they can read up on uh, what, what people here think. And yeah. of course, uh, uh, people were so sincere with me mm. and told me uh, some uh, very, very intimate, yes, mm. very private um, mm. things about the uh, beliefs or some facts from their life or share w shared with me w with their thoughts mm -hmm. and the uh, local people will know yeah, yeah, each yeah. other better yeah. because sure. they never they have never knew uh, each other so close yeah, yeah, in yeah. spite of they live in one uh, territory mm. in one uh, city mm and see each other and drink beer and etc and and spend time a lot but it's of course i i must confess that it's my talent of journalist of course yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it, yes i i had some reviews from the people yeah. this oh no i i didn't know about this um, man so interesting things wow wow it's cool they were so uh, honest with you. Mm. I think it's. I think that's stupid. I don't know this, but I think it's something true that you say there because I think sometimes you can be more honest with a stranger, you know, than with somebody you know you're going to meet all the time. It's uh, yeah. yeah. It's a good. Uh, it's a good trick for journalists. Yeah. Yes, yes, and uh, uh, and, talent, and good talent. talent. Yeah, of course. Oh, it's difficult <laughs> to refuse. <it. laughs> and uh, and people know my story and mm -hmm. uh, read my blog mm -hmm. and uh, read my texts and um, uh, 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 know me mm -hmm. and they open. Yeah. So it it was really nice and I met a lot of people Great. here. Like uh, and and famous and uh, known people and not well known, but it was so so interesting. The most interesting thing is the people, mm. yes. Yes, of course. And books, mm. and uh, f for me, uh, the libraries is a, a, some kind of temple, mm -hmm. yeah. And we can. You know, uh, when I started. Uh, uh, university, I very quickly changed from uh, university to to library. Mm. So I am I am actually education as a librarian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Yeah, great. yeah, it's uh, you are right. They are fantastic. Libraries are fantastic places. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for this interview, uh, for this welcome. interesting interview. Uh, it was great. I, w I, I wish you great success in Thank your you. work, and uh, um, I hope uh, this movement will develop. And uh, I think people understand the importance of international yeah. solidarity and supporting of intellectuals yeah. and and brave people. Mm and the uh, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, which w w we must fight for, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's the only yeah. way for change, isn't it, that we can say things. If everything is under control, then nothing will change. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. Again.